Psalms 100, a psalm of thanksgiving. Shout with joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to each generation. Good morning, I hope everybody is well. Welcome to our service.
Today's reading is from Luke 10, verse 25, the parable of the Good Samaritan, reading from the ESV. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbour as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbour? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him he passed on the he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, poured on oil and wine, then he set him on his own animal, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii, and gave them to the innkeepers, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbour to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, You go and do likewise. Here ends the reading. Good morning. I hope you're all well, and it's good to be with you again on this Sunday. From the scripture that I've just been read, at this point in Luke, Jesus is beginning the long journey to where he is going to be crucified. But before Jesus had already started down the road, the Lord stepped into his path, momentarily stalls the journey and tries to turn the road into a courtroom and Jesus into a defendant. Luke says the Lord intended to put Jesus to the test. And to do so, he asks two questions. The first one is, what must I do to be saved? To have an eternal life. No surprise there. The lawyer already knew the answer to the question. It was obvious. So much a part of everyday religious wisdom at the time. So Jesus could hand the question back to the lawyer. You've asked me a question, but you already know the answer. Jesus said, in effect, it's right there in scripture, isn't it? What do you read there. So the lawyer then answered his own question with the response that could have been predicted all along. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. These words that children at the time were taught to say by heart because these were the words at heart of the Jewish law. To love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. So what did Jesus mean when he said to those words, Why is that relevant to us now? Loving your neighbor as yourself is found eight times in the Bible. Not once, not twice, eight times. Loving your neighbor as yourself is important to God that he not only repeats himself, he makes it a command. And not just one in a list of many commands. Jesus coupled the command to love your neighbor as yourself with loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. But loving your neighbor as yourself isn't always easy. That's why God made it a command. He knew we'd struggle. So we have to do it on purpose and be intentional about it. So what does it mean to love your neighbor as yourself? Jesus says that, because he wants us to know two things. You need to know what love is and that you are loved. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7, Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. And it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, always hope, 
always preserve us. This is the way God loves us. Knowing that is really important and not just loved in a general kind of way, but deeply loved and unconditionally as well. We tap into this when we understand that God loved us first. He is the source of our love. God loves it even before Jesus gave himself for us. God the Father is the source of all love. Before we can give this love, we need to receive it ourselves. You can't give away what you don't have. Let's reflect on how much God loves us as we sing the next song together.
So loving your neighbor as yourself means that we know what love is and that we lo we are love when we realize God loves us and he is ours. Loving your neighbor means loving ourselves as well. The, to love your neighbor as yourself, as he says, you need to make, make, make sure that everything is right with yourself. The measurement within this command is as yourself. To love your neighbor as yourself, you need to love yourself first. This is something that gets misunderstood. It gets mixed up with dying to self and denying self as if we need to destroy ourselves. This is not true. Jesus died for each and every one of us. If Jesus valued us enough to go through what he went through, death on a cross, we owe it to him to value what he gave. He values we need to love what he loves us the bible even tells us that the father loves us much as he loves jesus learn to love ourselves prepares and helps us to love our neighbor so do you love yourself listen to this poem What do you think it means to love thyself? I feel like I hear it a whole lot, but don't nobody really teach me how to love myself. Cause when they say it, I feel like it's not really what they mean. When they show it, all I really see is people trying to cover up their own insecurities, but that don't feel right to me. Cause see, I thought I understood it. I thought I knew self love because I don't really not like myself too much. To somebody told me what happens when you don't see anything inside yourself worth loving and I was stumped. I ain't have an answer. And in fact, in that moment I realized that I couldn't even give a definitive example. Pause. Think about it. You ever think about how it's easy for us to encourage everyone else to love themselves but then when it comes to our turn we don't even give it a shot? You ever think about how hypocritical that actually really is? I don't know. Anyways, I didn't have any tactics. I didn't have any options. I had to do my own soul searching and I had to face the fact that I never really faced my negative thoughts and running away from them seemed like the easiest route with the least amount of obstacles. I guess it's easier to love thy neighbor, but just neglect the as thyself part. I'm guessing that it's a lot easier when all you see is good behavior, but talk to me when there's nothing to really hype thyself up on. Have you ever hated you? Have you ever looked at your reflection and thought to yourself, why am I so unlovable? Have you ever had to fight your own thoughts about the fact that you don't see any value inside your own self and you can't even seem to find something in yourself that seems enough for you? See, if you've never had to fight that battle, then you can't really coach me through it. And trust me, it is a battle and actually it's more like a war that we were never even meant to fight. If you've never not liked you, then you can't give me an opinion about how to like me. You don't know the things I've done. You don't know the things I've seen. But what if I told you I would also be a fool to say that self-love is impossible. It is a journey, but if you don't take it, then the odds of you finding it are way less probable. That's facts. Pause. Think about it. Self-love is the foundation of all of our relationships. It's not that hard to put two and two together and see if we don't have a positive relationship with ourselves and how we view them. It's gonna be very difficult to have that with others, don't you think? If we can't fully accept and embrace ourselves, we can't fully accept and embrace others. And if we can't show healthy and productive affection for ourselves, I mean, you guessed it. How can we show healthy and productive affection for others? I don't know. Anyways, in the world that we live in today, healthy self-love seems like a foreign concept. It's easy to get self-love mixed up with self-obsession. It's easy to get flipped upside down when I start to think that I'm my very own blessing. Nah, nah, I'm talking about appreciation. I'm talking about valuing and cherishing your nature. The way you look without the glamour and the glitz. Treasuring who you are even when no one else is. Your quirky and weird personality traits. Your distinct and different attributes as they are. The sound of your own voice. The way you see things. The victories you've taken. And yes, 
not even down to your scars. It's beautiful. It's unique. It's sacred. But none of it means a thing if you believe that when God made you, he really made a mistake and flunked the test. I mean, pause, really think about it. Have you ever thought about the fact that when you see yourself as less than, you're really telling God he made a mistake when he made you? Do you really think God makes mistakes? Have you ever thought about the reality that the more lovable that we try to make ourselves, the less lovable we actually become? I mean, really, everything that we do to cover up our imperfections is really just communicating to others imperfections are not acceptable. Do you really think that way? I don't know. Anyways, after a whole lot of soul searching, I'm starting to realize that self-love really isn't about me at all. It's actually more about God. It's really about accepting what he's made and the fact that I'm different from you and the other billions of people on this earth is not really that odd. It's actually remarkable. Truth is, I think the purest way for us to see ourselves is through the eyes of the one that made us. If he saw me as worth it, then maybe I can learn to see me as the same. Thus, they say self-love is the best love, but really I think God's is. And truth be told, in my fickle human nature, I'm really not all that loving, and yet still, God is. Maybe your self-love is not really about you. Maybe you can't view yourself through your own eyes because your perception has been skewed, but hey, that's a lot of food for thought. So pause. Think about it. So let's pause and think about the about the next song as it's playing.
Loving your neighbor as yourself means acting with compassion. When Jesus was asked, who is my neighbor? He responded with the story of the Good Samaritan. What is the bottom line of this story? Who did Jesus say was being a neighbor? The one who had compassion, the Good Samaritan. Compassion is not simply a warm, fuzzy feeling in our hearts. Compassion does something. A heart that's moved by compassion cannot sit idly by while someone is suffering or is in need. Loving your neighbor or yourself is being moved to help to the full extent of your ability. We have to take action. It means we have to look within ourselves and to help others. In the NIV translation in 1 Corinthians 13 says, love protects. In Philippians 2, 4, it says, let each of us look not only to his own interest, but also to the interests of others. Love your neighbor as yourself is to look out for other people's well-being. To look out for them is to pay attention. You notice if you need something, then you help. For example, their clothing tag is sticking out of the back of their, their neck or, or their, their shirt. Or they have food on their face. So you let them know. Or something more serious like prevent a small child from running into the road. Loving your neighbor means speaking kindly. The childhood rhymes, sticks and stones may break my bones, is not true. Words build up and words tear down. God reached the world using words. The Bible says Jesus is the word in John 1.1. 1, 1. So speaking positively about yourself is also a habit. Let's listen to a poem of affirmation that one of our churches says to itself regularly. In my house, there is joy in my house, there is love in my house, there is forgiveness in my house, there is salvation in my house, there is, there, there is healing in my house, there is favor in my house, there is faith in my house, there is provision in my house, there, there is, is victory, victory in, in my house. house. To love yourself, to love your neighbor as yourself, is to use words to build them up, speaking words of encouragement to someone who's down in the most obvious example but there are others. We can be more intentional with our words by looking for and emphasizing the good. We can always find something good if we take the time to look for it. Examples of this is giving someone a compliment or telling someone how much you appreciate it. You know, a soft word can, call, can, can enrich the heart. While this song is being played, we invite you to pray to God about the concerns you may have or say a prayer of thanks. Let's talk to the Lord together. In Hebrew 4, 15 and 16, it says, we pray to someone who is able to sympathize with us so we can have confidence in the person we are praying to because he understands us. The way to better understanding the will of God in your life is choosing to live your life as a command in his word. There are God-honoring ways to do your job to love your spouse, to talk and to talk and, and to take care of your body. Submitting ourselves to God is worship to him. It renews our minds to be able to understand God's will. 
Prayer does not mean we are going to get whatever we want just because we ask. God is not a is not an ATM that you just press numbers and He delivers. God is sovereign. He knows what is best. But if you ask for the things that line up with His will for our lives, for example, it doesn't always happen how, happen how we think. It shouldn't, but we will see results.
let us pray lord we praise you for your majesty your power your glory and your authority there is no god like you there is no god besides you and we will worship no other god but you we bless your name in this moment lord we think of someone who feels that their life is empty someone who is overwhelmed by a sense of their own unworthiness someone who has been made to feel useless and now finds it hard to live life to the full lord we think of someone who is hurting someone who is facing a time of bereavement or loss someone who is facing the loss of employment that has been the source of security and given them a purpose in life someone who is needing to learn that they will still matter even when the family have left home lord may your presence and the power of your spirit be with them lord we think of someone who feels as if they are broken someone who has experienced failure or disappointment someone who just needs to be held longs to be understood and is afraid of rejection someone who pretends to be confident self-assured and full of courage but inside has needs they just cannot share lord may you encircle them with your presence lord we lift up the whole world to you who is our neighbor and may your love spread through our hearts for each individual in the name of christ amen <coughs>
house. There's joy in my house. There's love in my house. There's forgiveness in my house. There's salvation in my house. There is healing in my house. There's favour in my house. There's faith in my house. There's provision in my house. There's, There's victory, victory in my, my house. house. Bye.